let's talk about who's behind the ultimate scam. We're going to find the fraudsters only on your marketplace. We're in India on the trail of a criminal gang. Can you go inside the building now? There's a good chance they've targeted you. All right, they're going in. They're nervous, but they're going in. We're tracking down the fraudsters behind a very convincing scam. My name is Dennis Gray, calling you from Revenue Agency CRA. Ever heard that message? Well, it's a lie, not the real Canada Revenue Agency. Canada Revenue Agency filed a lawsuit against your name. Instead, it's one of the largest cyber schemes in Canadian history. There will be legal consequences and you will be arrested to defraud the government. But who falls for it? In Canada, this man did. 3,600. This one is 7,000. Makes it $10,600. And this one is 28,000. And then finally $28,000. Yeah. He's asked us to hide his identity, worried his employer will judge him and he'll lose his job. So we're calling him Joe. You got a call from someone saying they were with the Canada Revenue Agency. What did they say to you? There's a warrant out for me that I owe money and they're going to send me to jail. They're going to compensate my property. They're going to contact my employers and freeze all my assets. In that call, they said you owed how much money? 7000 The scammers can spoof numbers, make it look like they're the CRA. That's why so many of us take the call. So after you put the $7,000 in the machine, we said, hold the line. And the officer said, you have to pay the sum of 32000 to take your name off, and they will help me to pay it. So they've gone from saying $7,000 to now it's $32,000. Yes. What impact has all of this had on your health? I can't focus properly. I'm nervous. I feel like I'm getting a heart attack. He's not alone. In just five years, Canadian authorities have received more than 60,000 complaints, over $10 million stolen. And those numbers keep rising. Why do you think it's been so successful? because it's so well organized. Mark Simchison used to lead the major fraud unit of the Hamilton police. The criminals are using victim vulnerability, and it's not every day and every Canadian citizen that is being victimized by this. It is the vulnerable, the elderly, um, new immigrants to Canada that may not know all of our laws. He says this super scam goes beyond fraud. I'd also term it as extortion. They are threatening people with arrest, incarceration, deportation, you name it. That's extortion. So it goes beyond fraud. Even as we investigate the calls, like many of you, we're getting harassed by them too. Investigation Division of Canada Agency of Canada. We want to find the scammers. Step one is calling them back. Uh, yes, hello. I uh, I am calling because of a message received to call you back that said uh, uh, that, that money was owed. All right, Mr. Collins. The reason behind this call is that we have done a random audit on your tax filings of last few years, and we have found several miscalculations in your tax filings. This is a felony and a conviction can carry a sentence of up to five years and or a fine up to $100,000. We know this is a scam. You went into this store. To this store. All right. Let's this location look. with this machine. But Jahangir Rashidi did not. He's originally from Iran and believed a government could actually do this. How did this start? With one call, phone call. They call and they said, this is Revenue Canada and Government of Canada lawsuit you for $99,500. What did you think when you heard? It's a huge amount. I said, I don't have it. He said, go and borrow from the bank. Go to your friend. Go to your employee. Go wherever you can make money. Doesn't matter. Just you have to pay. You have to pay, you pay. And the total amount he paid? 110000 altogether. 45,000 was my RSP. And then 
$5,000 my saving account, $4,000 for my last paycheck checking account, $5,000 from my son, and the rest, credit card, line of credit. I scan it. His life savings, gone, disappeared into an untraceable Bitcoin machine. After hearing his story, it's time for us to confront the scammers. Uh, so my name is David Common. I'm a journalist with a television program called CBC Marketplace, a Canadian TV show. I'm wondering why call centers in India are harassing Canadians and pretending to be tax authorities when they aren't. Okay, sir. Why are you lying? Why are you taking money from Canadians who don't owe money? Well, sir, I can tell you one thing over here, oh, because, you know, you are a journalist, right? Yes, I'm a journalist. Do you feel honest with your work? Yes. Yeah. You feel honest? Because this is not honest. No, 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 no. no. Do, you, do you feel bad about what you do every day? Yes. Yeah. Do you just work for other people? Yes. Minutes later, he admits where he's calling from. Are you in Mumbai or are you in Pune? Yes. You're in one of them? Yes. That's the lead we've been waiting for. After even more digging, we've narrowed down our search. Off to Mumbai. So we're going to confront them in person. While well, the scam ends up in Canadian homes, it begins right here in India. It's a huge operation. It's a big industry. It's a big market. Ritesh Bhatia is a top Indian cybersecurity investigator. It's a big scam. It's quick money. It's fast money. It doesn't take much of efforts. But money isn't the only motivator for the young scammers. I'm capable of doing a crime without being caught. That gives them the, the thrill. What they're not seeing is the other side. They lack empathy. They're brainwashed also. They're nothing but they're financial terrorists. <laughs> he says the scammers are smart. Their technology sophisticated, constantly changing tactics to stay hidden. When you see the phone number, it looks like it's a Canadian number, not an Indian number. So they spoof the number. So these sophists themselves, these very sophisticated and very great sophists, are being misused. And he says there's a reason the callers are asking for the money in Bitcoin. Bitcoin, uh, you know, a cryptocurrency. A cryptocurrency cannot be traced. It just cannot be traced come what may. When you hand that money over, it is gone. It's gone. Two years ago, the largest call center scam in this country's history came to an abrupt end, all because investigators in this police station found out what was going on, ultimately arresting hundreds of people. So how long have you been police commissioner here? The top cop behind the raid was Parambir Singh. We seized a lot of equipment, arrested a lot of people. They lived a great life, the ringleaders. Yes, our, uh, one of the main accused, uh, Sagar Thakkar, alias Shaggy, he had a very, very high-profile lifestyle. He was probably thinking of buying a private jet also at that point of time. A private jet? He was thinking of buying one, yes. That gives you a sense of just how much yes, money was involved yes, here. Yes, yes, it does give us a sense. You have taken action on this scam. That's right. Do you think that it is still operating? Uh, the IRS scam, I think, more or less has been wiped out from this country. But our detective work shows it has not been wiped out. There are new scammers in town. Don't go anywhere. We have information on where a call center has been operating, and this is around the time that they would begin making calls to places like Canada. We're going to try to confront them. Coming right up on Marketplace. Get more Marketplace. Sign up for our weekly newsletter, cbc.ca slash marketplace. This is your Marketplace. 
It's one of the largest cyber schemes in Canadian history. Fake CRA calls threatening thousands of Canadians. This call is from the Canada Revenue Agency. And after months of digging, we've traced those fake CRA calls to India. This is Malad Maloni. Yeah? This area. Yeah, okay. Inside this complex is an illegal call center set up to impersonate tax authorities, threaten honest people, and steal millions. Which one is the call center? We've hired Sidir Kotian to go inside to help us find the scammers. He fits the profile, young, tech savvy, and hungry for work. Did you hear them asking for money? No, money came, two of them money came. They had sale for $7,000. $7,000? One person had $3,000, $4,000. But then they discover Sadir's hidden camera. And what did they do to you when they realized that? They slapped that? me. They slapped you? Yeah. And then what did they do? They uh, punching on my back. And they are skidging my hair. Pulling your hair, yeah. yeah. Did they take the camera from you? Yeah. Right away. And did they? They take my mobile. Took your phone? Yeah, yeah. my phone, my purse. Yeah, your wallet, all, yeah. and did you have money in there? Uh, yeah. You had money? 2,500 rupees. 2,500 rupees. How did you get out? I was crying first. I was crying I was The scammers were inside this office, but we can't get in. Soon after they found out we were on to them, the place shut down. You must have been scared. Yeah. These are serious people. Uh, I think that they will kill me. <laughs> you were worried they would kill you? Yeah. Locked up, run away. Sudhir is OK, but it is clear we need to be careful. And as we continue our chase to find an active scam center, we need the inside scoop. Meet whistleblower Jayesh Dubey. It was big money. Yeah, it was big money. More and than I you would make it. anywhere else. I cannot make it anywhere now. Just two years ago, he worked at a different scam center, following a script and impersonating an American tax agent. Thank you for calling IRS. How may I help you? So we were trained like that to become an IRS officer, to pretend to be like an IRS officer. You're threatening people. Yeah, You're saying they could go to jail, they could get arrested. Yeah, yeah. You could get arrested. If you try to fight uh, against the IRS, then the penalty is $75,000 which you can never pay, and your assets and all is going to get freezed. That sound familiar? Well, back in Canada, Joe says he fell for that script, and it cost him over $36,000. This is a difficult question to ask now, but why did you stay on the phone with him and not say, I need to hang up and, and call my accountant or do some research? Because I believe that He's trying to help me when I realized I was so angry with myself, you know, that I should have done something like this, you know, that I should contact the police. But the way how he approached me, very professional, right, and very scary that I thought that he is an officer. We want to talk to those so-called officers. And with night falling in Mumbai, it's morning in Canada. So young scammers are getting ready to make calls. Our intel suggests they're doing it here, one of the sketchiest slums in Mumbai. We're just minutes away now from an apartment where we know a call center has been operating. We know these people are dangerous. We also know this area can be dangerous. And so we're working with some local Indian journalists to help us get inside. But after driving past the address, our helpers have a warning. Do you think we can safely go in the building? No, you can't go safely in the building, no. You can't do it, and, and why is that? What is the danger? Uh, because it's a total slum area, and many people like these frauds will come to know. With worries that people watching the building are armed, and knowing we'll stand out, our helpers are going inside solo. Outside, hidden from view, we wait, and then our helpers call. So the the call center has moved out. They they some they realized someone was onto them. But then our man on the inside hangs up, 
and sends this urgent text message. So it's now clear to us this area is dangerous, that we need to get out, that we're being watched, uh, and that the people who went into the building for us, they're being followed. This is worrying. We need to get out of the area fast. Kilometers away, we catch up with those helping us, and they are scared. We know there was a call center in that apartment, yeah. but it's gone. It's gone, yeah. There were five guys in one minute standing down the building watching us. They followed us like for one and a half kilometer. So we came all the way in the small lanes, cutting the roads. To escape? To escape, yes. Chased on foot, then on motorcycle, this criminal gang wants to protect themselves and has already shown a willingness to be violent. Why do you think they were following you? I guess still the work is going on, but not at that place. We may not have caught the scammers this time, but as we close in, their call centers shut down. As far as we know, this is the closest any journalist has ever come to confronting them. Cybersecurity investigator Ritesh Bhatia says the scam centers always seem to be one step ahead. They have spread themselves in different areas. So that in case of a raid is there, it's only at one particular location and only those few people are caught. And these people immediately alert the other people. So the alert or the other people just stop it and they move out. What you're talking about sounds like organized crime. It is completely an organized crime. Everyone is aware of it. It's huge. And it's huge. It's huge. In certain cases, I wouldn't hesitate to say that the police might also be hand in gloves with them. You mean the police are profiting? Yep. So the scammers are giving the police money? Well, that's common. Jayesh agrees. Do you think people here in India who are doing this scam feel safe? Yeah. They are safe. They are safe from the police of my country and also from the Americans. Why do you say that? Because uh, whomsoever was working with the IRS, like they have that security, you know, paying to the police and all. Paying, paying off the yeah, police here. Yeah. I mean, Security. you're saying the police are basically part yeah. of the scam in yeah, this country. Of course, yes. Sounds like you're saying someone needs to light a fire. Yes, a big one. Time to ask the police what they're doing to stop the scam once and for all. Nobody contacted us from Canada. No one's contacted. No one, no one contacted. That doesn't seem right. Do you have a story you want us to investigate? Write to us, marketplace at cbc.ca. This is your marketplace. CRA scam centers in India are fooling thousands of Canadians. More than 60,000 complaints, millions of dollars lost. In 2016, Deputy Police Commissioner Parag Manere led a raid shutting down a huge illegal call center targeting North Americans. Deputy Commissioner, David from CBC Hi. Canada. We're about to enlighten him. That same old scam is still going on with new tactics. We have been able to see places where, even in the last couple of weeks, that call centers were in fact operating. Does that surprise you? I believe there are 99.9% .9 call centers that are genuine. Mm -hmm. You know, they are providing services. But that's not what these ones are. These ones these, these are involved ones are not in those. that tax scam. Absolutely. They're taking huge amounts of money, and it's operating out of this country once again. See, you have to understand this. There's a minuscule minority of people. They are bringing bad name to the entire industry. So what can the police do to try to stop the, the exactly. bad minority? It's a international investigation, and it's international crime. Until everybody tries. It cannot be just said to be the responsibility of India. So who is responsible? The top cop here, Commissioner Parambir Singh, he blames the RCMP. Nobody contacted us from Canada. No one's contacted. No one, no one contacted. American authorities did contact us. No one contacted, although on the website of RCMP, yeah. we did see a post relating to our cases once. But, but you're telling me 60,000 people at least have complained in Canada and nobody from Canada no, has told nobody you anything? Con nobody contacted. And the only way you found out about it is by going on the RCMP website yourself? That's right, That's right. yeah. 
That doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem right. The Indian police, they were willing to talk to us, but for more than two months, the RCMP, our own police, refused our repeated requests for an on-camera interview. And then at the last moment on the day of broadcast, senior government officials called us up to say they are now in contact with Indian police, even if at this point, we have not yet seen any action. Former fraud chief Mark Simchison says actions speak louder than words. What needs to be done in Canada and abroad to stop it, given the experience that you have, what would you say? No one police service is going to do it. No one government is going to do it. It has to be a multi-jurisdictional task force approach where everybody's involved. Sounds like you're saying someone needs to light a fire. Yes, a big one. While we wait for that to happen, CRA victim Jahangir Rashidi has a message for those who stole all his money. You don't have nothing. Money? Okay, you have billion dollars. What you going? What you want to do? What do you want to do with billion dollars? Your house is full of money. What are you gonna do? It is. But the thing you have to have, you don't have. What's that thing? This humanity. After losing $110,000, how does he move on? Life is not finished. It's going. You have to go in. You have to go. Don't give up. Go. Stand up again. Walk again. Who's watching you? Many people don't have the know-how to secure their smart devices. I don't know if you realize this, but those cameras are actually broadcasting on the internet. Really? Yeah. I didn't realize that anyone could have access to that. Here we go. We got credentials. All right. Connected. Attention, John and Peter. Your home has been hacked. It's almost as if the house is haunted. If any, like, buddy would walk into the situation, they would think they're walking into a horror movie.